بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبشرح لصدري ويسر لأمري وحمل عقدة من لساني يفطر قولي My topic for tonight, does anybody know what my topic is for tonight? Huh? I was in No, that was him. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, my topic for tonight is bad company. Alright? I'm going to start off with a hadith, which I'm sure 90% of us have heard. Okay? It's narrated that the Prophet وسلم, says that a good companion, a good friend, who sits with you, who, who you hang out with, who you chill with, who you are consistently around, is the example of a good companion is like one who sells musk, right? Who sells cologne, sells perfume, sells incense that you burn, you know? And the bad companion is like someone who is a blacksmith. Alright? Now pay attention to this part. When you leave the company of a good person, you smell nice. Okay? You, when you hang out with someone that's always you know, you're walking through like the department stores, they're spraying perfume everywhere and things like that. At the very least, you walk out of there smelling nice. When you leave the company of a bad person, or a bad companion, I should say, you're dirty, right? A blacksmith, you get oily, you get sweaty, you know, there's no AC usually inside of a blacksmith shop. So let me ask you guys a quick question. Uh, it's very popular, it's a very popular comment when people say, don't judge people. Right? Anybody ever heard that before? Don't judge others? Everyone. I'm sure everyone on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, probably khutbahs. Okay? You've heard someone say, don't judge people. Alright? Let me ask you guys a question. Does this hadith ask us to judge people? It says no. It doesn't? It says? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. Anybody else? Maybe some like yes, maybe no. <laughs> half and half. Anybody? Oh, come on, guys. I know it's a little late in the evening, but let's, let's sit up straight. Does this hadith ask us to judge people? Yes. Okay. I agree with you. So the first part of my talk is to clarify some of these issues, or some of these misconceptions. All right? Normally, when someone says, don't judge me, Usually when it's the person themselves saying, don't judge me, what they're really saying is, you don't know me, you don't understand my situation, leave me alone. Right? Does that sound okay? We're good? Anyone have any problems with that? No? Okay. Alright. Now, this hadith, and I'm going to break this up, okay? I think that this hadith does say to judge people, but I think there are certain guidelines Maybe we, if we think judging is like a negative connotation, maybe we should use the word like evaluate or something. <laughs> okay, let's evaluate each other. All right. First and foremost, right, right versus wrong is explained to us by society. Correct? No, I'm just making sure you guys are right. Okay. Right and wrong is based on shaitan, right or wrong? No. Okay. Who is it based on? It's based on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? And the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that's first and foremost. So when we determine good or bad, when we evaluate good versus bad, it's based on what Allah subhanahu wa taala has taught us and what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us. Not necessarily what society accepts. Okay. Not necessarily what our parents have taught us. Usually, hopefully, they have taught us the Quran and the Sunnah. But sometimes maybe we have different qualities uh, than what should have been taught. So, number one, right versus wrong is taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and explained by His Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second thing, this hadith, okay, that I, that I quoted earlier, let me ask you a question. Who's the main object of the hadith? You. Huh? You. Me? The person. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. The person themselves. Not a good companion or a bad companion. Okay? That's just the way of the Prophet said to ask you to think about yourself. That's just a way for him to explain it. Okay? But the main focus of the hadith is you, not other people. When you evaluate other people, or when you judge other people or whatever, the main focus shouldn't be them. The main focus should be bettering yourself. 
Okay, that's number two. Number three, realize and understand that your judgment or your evaluation is nowhere near complete. It's nowhere near final. Because you don't know everything about that person's situation. Which leads us into number four, you should be giving people benefit of the doubt. Give people benefit of the doubt. Okay? Regardless of what situation they're in. Give them the benefit of the doubt. And at the very least, realize that maybe they commit this sin, but maybe at night they repent, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it from them. Which leads us to the next one, the next guideline. You shouldn't be arrogant after evaluating. You shouldn't. Because subhanAllah, how, you, how like, terrible a situation. How much will it like just completely suck on the Day of Judgment? You're there, and you judge someone. Let's say they sinned, and let's say they never were forgiven for that sin. You're there on the Day of Judgment, that person has that sin. And because of your arrogance towards that person, they walk up to you and say, you know what, you wronged me, you can have this sin now. How terrible is that? In this life, your arrogance caused you to take the sins of others in the next life. So let's say someone sins. Let's say they fall into sin. Let's say they consistently fall into sin. Your arrogance towards them could cause you to earn that sin and not that or keep your punch for it the day of judgment. And no one wants that, right? We've got our own problems to worry about, let alone the sins of others to, to accept for ourselves. Okay? Next is that when you quote unquote evaluate who's a good companion to hang out with and who's a person that maybe you shouldn't hang out with as much, you should actually show some care for that person. Maybe you know a person is an alcoholic. Okay? And this happened at the time of the Prophet There was a man that used to fall into this sin consistently. And some of the companions, you know, they mentioned and things like that. And so the Prophet warned them and he says, be careful. Because verily that man loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This person is falling into sin consistently. Show some care for them. Make dua for them. After you give them benefit of the doubt, right? After you uh, hide their faults, okay? After all this, at the end of the day, maybe even they're sinning against you. Maybe they're stealing against you. Maybe whatever it is. Turn their sin into good deeds for yourself. Make dua for them. Show some care for them. Maybe something happened to them. Maybe they stole from you. Maybe they lost their job and they need to feed their, their children. They can't pay off your bill that they owe you. Show some care for them and make dua for them. Next is that there are certain circum circumstances that you're supposed to evaluate people. Not every single person you meet, you need to judge good person, bad person, good person, bad person. Right? We are not CNN. Allah did not hire us as investigative reporters. Mind your own business. Right? Mind our, let's mind our own business. If you're put in a situation where, for instance, someone asks you, um, is this a good person to deal business with? <coughs> or is this a good person for my child to uh, think about maybe proposal for? Or whatever. In that situation, okay. Maybe for yourself, I need to evaluate, should I hang out with this person or not? Okay, that's it. That's the end of the line. The rest of their life is none of your business. Don't poke, don't prod, don't walk around with like a gavel just judging people 24-7. That's not our job. That's not our duty. Remember, the hadith isn't talking about them. It's talking about us. Okay? And lastly, condemning people as a guideline for judging people. Condemning people to hellfire benefits nobody. But being a Bashir, right? Being someone who is showing people the glad tidings of Jannah benefits everybody. We often forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the Prophet وسلم, a quality, a sifa, an attribute of Bashir. Yes, he was a Nadir. Yes, he was someone that warned people. But at the same time, he was a Bashir, someone who gave good news and glad tidings to those who followed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. So these are certain guidelines that we need to make sure that we follow before we actually go on to say bad company and their harmful effects. Okay, you're with me? Okay, let's go on this journey. Alright.
So the first thing we take away from this hadith is the focus is who? Yourself. Yourself. Second, it's important to differentiate, differentiate between an action and a quality in a person. Because if you stay away from any person that commits a sin, you are going to be the loneliest person in the world. Alright? If you put all the sinners on an island, uh, and yourself on a different place, and you just further yourself, you're just going to have no one to hang out with. You're just going to be like someone that sits at home all day. Like, posting on Twitter and Facebook, and warning other people about everybody else. Right? So, be careful. Differentiate between people who use sin, who sin is a quality in them, versus sin as an action. Because we all fall into sin, right? All of us. And it's only through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're cleared of these sins on the Day of Judgment. Okay? Number three, take this seriously. We have friends and family members that we may have the ability to influence. If our friends are not under our influence, that means we are under their influence. So take it seriously. When the Prophet tells you to make sure you stay around good company, good company, take it seriously. And if you're hanging around bad company, and there's no real reason for you to do so, and you have the ability to remove yourself from that situation, and you've invited people to Islam, and I'm not saying for you to blacklist people. No, we don't blacklist people in Islam. Everyone's a part of the community. The major sinner, the minor sinner, everybody's a part of the community. But the amount of time you spend with these people, or spend with people that have a negative influence on you, should be zero, if any at all. It should be very minimal. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ويوم يعض الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا and on the, day, on the day the wrongdoer will bite his hands out of regret, he will say, Oh, I wish I had taken with the messenger a way. I said, I had taken his path. I followed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya waylata laytani lam attakhath fulalan khalila. Oh, woe to me. This is a person on the day of judgment saying, Oh, snap, I'm in trouble. Oh, woe to me. I wish I had not taken that person who influenced me negatively as a close friend. Khalila, the closest of friends. لَقَدْ أَطَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ He led me away from dhikr, from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي After it had come to me. So this person knew better. This person knew better. And yet he still allowed other people to influence him negatively. He led me away from the remembrance after it had come to me. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا And ever to say, and ever it's shaitan. And he will always do this, <clears throat> abandon you. You know that scholars, they say that every sin eventually leads to kufur if you stay on that path. Okay. And shaitan has like three or four basic levels of working with us. All right. And at the end, when he leads a person to kufur, what does he say? What does he say? Inni bari ummik, inni akhafullaha, Shaitan leads you to kufr. He leads you to hellfire. He takes you to its doorstep. And as soon as you get there, this guy, I'm telling you, is the dirtiest player in the book. Alright? With the dirtiest tricks. He makes you commit kufr. And after you commit kufr, he goes, Inni bari ummik. I have nothing to do with this person. I have fear of Allah. This is Shaitan saying this. Shaitan is saying, I fear Allah more than this person that I just let the kufr. Because at least I believe in Allah. My brothers and sisters, when our friends are impacting us negatively and they lead us down this path, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that you will regret hanging out with these people. You will walk up to these people on the Day of Judgment and say, This sin that I have is because of you, you take it. And you know what that's saying? <coughs> nafsi, nafsi. I've got nothing to do with you. And they'll run away. Like a coward. They will run away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad, and this is the fourth point to, to take away. 
those whom you spend your time with have an effect on you, whether it's positive or negative. Okay? You take this from the hadith, we understand it. At the very least, right, you'll smell either like someone who smell, who sells musk or someone who is a blacksmith. Okay? So they'll have an effect on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad, so is he who is on clear evidence, bayina min wabi, right? Something clear from his Lord, bayina tim min wabi, okay? Is he like the one, kaman zuyina lahu su wa amani? Is he like the one who his evil work has been made attractive to him? But tabau ahla ahu. And they followed their own desires. When I was first memorizing this ayah, it was like very confusing to me. And not the meaning, but necessarily the way that the words are actually played out. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off the, the ayah, and it's in the singular form. Okay? Right? These are words that are singular. Okay? And they follow their desires. Now these words are plural. And I was very confused. I was like, hold on a second. Right? Anyone speaking in the English language? You start saying I, 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 and then we, you're like, okay, that's, that's not grammatically correct, right? So unless you're talking about a different, different sentence, but if you start, if you speak in singular form, it should be singular form. So I asked my Quran teacher, I said, this sounds like, uh, explain this to me. And wallahi, it was like, so the person, su'u'amani, right, on the day of judgment, who are you responsible for, your sins or someone else's? Your sins. It's plural. When you follow, are the desires that you follow, are they only yours or sometimes other people's? Sometimes other people's, right? Allah SWT is saying you're going to be held responsible for your sins and when you follow the desires of others that lead you to sin. Okay? So be careful. Because people do have an impact on you. Don't act like it's all good and gravy, and they're never going to harm me. Sometimes it's a little arrogant of us to assume that we're the only ones that can bring about positive change to people. We have like a hero complex. Okay? I'm going to save every single person from sinning, and at the end of the day, I'm going to walk away scotch-free. Nothing bad's going to happen to me. That's just not true. That's just not true. So when you find people that bring about your negative sides, your negative qualities, bring about negative qualities in yourself, bring about sin in yourself, and you realize that hanging out with these people increases your sinning, be careful. In fact, the scholars, they say that this is one of the four types of poisons, is bad company. Alright, we good? Okay. I'll end with this ayah, and then uh, if we have a couple minutes for Q&A before Sheikh Fahd, the scheme starts. The worst company you can keep is who? Shaitan. <laughs> Seems kind of obvious. It was, it was intentionally obvious. It wasn't a trick question. Right? The worst company you can keep is who? Shaitan. Alright. How do you keep company with Shaitan? Does that make sense? Like, you know, Shaitan and I, we're going to go out and get some burgers tonight, stuff like that. Yes, brother. I'm sorry? <laughs> right, so like you're one guy and one girl and then Shaitan's company, so you're chilling with Shaitan. Okay, alright, that's a different, I didn't even think about that, alright. How can you have company with Shaitan? Yes, Sahih. Shirk. Shirk? Shirk. Shirk? Okay. What do you mean by that? Following the footsteps of Shaitan. Good. Yes, another brother? You're going to say that? Just doing haram. Consistently following, falling into haram. Consistently falling into haram, make sure that when you commit a sin, you immediately repent. Immediately. You know, subhanAllah is very like, his tricks are, this guy is such a punk, man, Shaitan. You know, before you sin, he's going to walk up to you and say, Don't worry, do it. Allah is most forgiving. He'll forgive you. No problem. It's all good. Bismillah. He'll say, Commit the sin. As soon as you're done sinning, how are you going to repent? Allah's not going to forgive you. You know what you were doing was wrong. Right? Do you see his trick? 
and subhanAllah, it's like dominoes falling. Push the first one, and the rest follow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Satan has overcome them and made them forget the remembrance of Allah. Those are the party of shaitan. Verily, no doubt, no question, should be completely clear and obvious, the people, the party of shaitan, they are going to be the true losers. In this life, they might look like winners. In this life, what they're doing might look appealing. But they will be the true losers. <coughs>